Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about the Nikon F. Introduced in 1959 and considered the first modern SLR camera. I have a nice example here with a 50mm f2 lens and a metered prism. So I'm going to do a quick overview on this camera. So on the front we have the shutter release timer. So it's essentially a self timer. I think it takes 10 seconds before it takes a picture. There you go. Um, then next to that we have the depth of field preview button so if you hold this down it will stop down the lens to the set aperture so see now it's at 2 so it's wide open if you close it a bit you see the aperture changing that's useful if you want to check what's sharp and what's not uh, then you have the dismount button for the lens here and then a flash sync port there for attaching cables if you're using electronic strobes so let's take a look at how to mount the lens because what's interesting about this camera is it's the first time that Nikon provided with a through the lens metering system. So this prism is attached to the body. I'll get into that later but for now what we need to take a look at is this lug here. I'll pick it up so I can show you better. Uh, so this is basically a metal lug that's attached to the aperture ring on the lens barrel. Uh, why? Because the meter has no way of telling what aperture you're on unless there's a mechanical connection between these. Today I believe it's done electronically, but back in the day they had to find another way, so they came up with this arm prong design. And it's important to index your lens before you mount it on the camera so you have the right aperture and the meter doesn't uh, take a faulty reading. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to take the lens off. Set this down for a second. So, on the lens barrel, you have the aperture ring here, focus ring here, like with any other lens. And then, I'm gonna get this in focus. There we are. So, you have the little black dot here, and you align that to the lux. Uh, usually, it's 5.6. 5, 5. I think it's on all lenses that it's 5.6. So, you set it to 5.6. You line up the black dot on the lens barrel with the black dot on the body and then you just turn it on. I'm just going to do it halfway and now pay attention to this bit here. If I turn this, it will engage the prong that comes out from the meter there. And now the lens is indexed and mounted. Uh, you can check the aperture here. There's a little scale here. This is a 50mm f2 and there's a red indicator there to show you that it's uh, indexed at f2. So now the light meter will get all the apertures right. Alright, so that's that. Uh, let's take a look at the top plate now. So I'm going to turn it around. From left to right, you have the rewind crank here, just as on any other camera. Uh, for this model specifically, there is a little socket around it that you can slide a speed light flash on. Um, or a cold shoe mount accessory so you can mount other non-Nikon brand flashes uh, because obviously there's no other cold shoe on the camera. Then this unit is actually the metered prism. Uh, I'm gonna skip that for now because I'll discuss that later. Uh, but what is useful to know is that this is actually the way you, shut, you set the shutter dial now. Um, it's on the... this is part of the prism. So if you turn this it will communicate to the actual shutter dial which is over here. Uh, you'll see that in a later shot here. And then you have all the shutter speeds there. It ranges from T all the way up to a thousandth of a second which at the time was pretty good. Um, then next to that you have the little shutter release here. So that's how you take a picture. And then you crank it. It's not full crank. I mean it's not a single crank. You can crank it once or you can crank it in steps, not like with like or something, you can just do it as you like to do it, that's like three or four and that's one full one, same thing. Uh, what is interesting though, is that there is an advanced function and a rewind function. So there's this little sleeve around the shutter release that you can turn. So now I turned it to R, and now it's on advanced. So if you advance it and you look at this little dot here, that shows that the film is being advanced. Normally this would turn too if there's film, but this camera's empty now so it doesn't do that. So let's see that again. 
to advance it and you see that the thing is turning as well. Uh, why is that useful? If you want to do double exposure, you can set it to R and then engage the shutter again and you see this didn't move uh, because it didn't advance the film, it just recocked the shutter. And then you can take a shot if you switch it back to A. I think. Yeah. Alright. And then if you engage it again, you can take another shot on the same frame if you want. If you leave if you put it back to R again and repeat the process. Or you can just advance to the next frame now, which I just did. So that's that. Uh, then next to that there's the frame counter here. Nothing special there, there's a little thing, you can set it to uh, 36 or 20 shots, I think. Yeah, there used to be rolls of 20. I think there's still lower end films that have 20 frames on it. Uh, so yeah, you can do that. And that's basically it for the top. And let's look at the back. At the back there's the dismount button for the prism. That works in unison with this one here, on the front little lever there, but uh, we're gonna look at that in a second. Uh, for the rest there's not that much going on on the back, it's just a clean black thing. There's also no door, because uh, this body was taken straight from the Nikon SP rangefinder camera and uh, one of the quirky things about that camera was that the back comes off entirely to load film. So there's no hinged door like you would expect. Starting from the Nikon F2 there was a hinged door. People complain about this, but you know, it's fine. I never had problems with it. Then on the bottom plate, uh, again not that much going on, standard tripod, mount, screw, socket thing, um, a little latch to open it, I'm gonna show you that when we load the film. Uh, and then here is a uh, little reminder dial, you can set the film speed and whether it's color or black and white that you have loaded. Alright so I'm gonna turn it back around because now I'm gonna talk a bit about the prism. So, today we're used to having prisms on cameras that meter through the lens. Back in the day it was not that obvious, so it was an option, because it was a new concept. So what did you get if you didn't have this? You either got a little shaft you could put on the camera, uh, like a waist level finder, or you got this, which is the plain prism for a Nikon F. It's from another camera I have, uh, a black one. Uh, this is a non-metered pentaprism. Uh, the only difference between this and this one is that this one is not metered and this one is metered. So I'm gonna take it off now so we can see what's going on with the prism. To take the prism off you press down this button and then you flip it or well I'll flip it to show it anyways and then you have this lever here that you press down and then it comes off like that. And then you see the ground glass there. Uh, and now we also we see the body of the camera now. So this is the actual shutter dial here. And you see there's this little prong that connects to the tube on the prism unit. Right there, so this goes on there. The only thing you have to be mindful of is when you set it back. I like to set it to 60, I think it believe, I believe it says in the manual to set it to 60. And you set it to 60 as well here, like so. And then you can put them back together. But I'm gonna do that later, because I wanna talk about the prism some more. So I'm gonna set the camera aside for a second. Put it here. So, the prisms. This is the metered prism. Uh, again we have the scale here on the front for indexing the lens and you see the prong is right there. Uh, there's little two lugs that fit on the camera body and this lever disengages that. And then there's another locking thing on the back as well that uses the button. Uh, the radical. The radical is a standard uh, yeah, what do you call it? Micro prism. It's like a circle, it's very traditional. Uh, the metering is done through the lens, obviously, and it's center weighted. Uh, so how do you actually use this? You turn it on by pressing this little button on the side and then that thing will pop up to show you that it's on. It's also, it has a red line there. So this is on, off, on, off. 
it's important because it will drain the battery if you keep it on. So be mindful of that. And that's basically it. It takes a cell here. If you need to change the battery, you can use a coin or a screwdriver uh, to change it out. I don't know by heart what battery it is, but it's a very common one. All right, so that's the meter prism. Set that down. And then we have the plane prism, which is just as the name suggests, a plane prism. And this is like uh, yeah, the standard one you would have gotten when this camera came out. Uh, there's a there's a notable difference in size and bulk, uh, obviously because the one is just glass and the other one has the electronic component to it. So that's it. All right. So let's put it back together now. So I'm gonna take this away. Uh, the ground glass, by the way, is very nice. It's a uh, very bright especially for cameras of that time and this is an old one so I expect that it even was brighter when it was a brand new camera and now you can see the reticle here go a little bit closer see if I can focus that yeah so it's a uh, you can see it if I turn it a bit like this yeah so it's a split prism reticle so that's that so I'm gonna set it down and we'll mount The light meter prism so oh, this is difficult to do man when you're making video so I'll press this button down you take the prism put it on there like so all right let's get a few from this side and then you see these little arms here that will go around the Nikon badge there and then you just press it down and it clicks into place that's good to go make sure again that you set the shutter speed to 60 on the body and the light meter prism so there's no errors there all right so that's how the prism works and now we'll get into loading some film I have this roll of Portra 400 here uh, let's flip it around so as mentioned in the overview there's a little lug here you flip that you turn it to open and then the back comes off in its entirety. Uh, I like to set it down like this when it has a 50, it's easy. Uh, be mindful not to touch this, it's a bit common sense, but you know, I like to keep it tidy, especially with these old cameras, they're in a good condition, so put this away. And then you just take the roll of film here, the canister, it goes in upside down like this and I like to keep my thumb here and then just drag it across the lead uh, the guides again not touching them and then there's the first sprocket here uh, the first gear so you put it on that and then I like to drag the lead just till the first sprocket and then I just fold in the lead into the take up spool there and then if the shutter is cocked, you give it a shot and then you just advance the film gently Gentle. yes alright and then make sure the film is a bit taut so you just like that and not too much make sure the film is nice and tight fits snugly in there and then you take the back and you just slide it from the bottom you can't put it straight on you have to slide it on a bit so you you press it down you feel the resistance from the back plate and then just slide it on like this and then I just flip it like this and then you can see that the ring needs to fit snugly around the tripod mount there and then you just uh, turn this close it and then it's good to go uh, again then make sure you set the uh, film speed here or the chosen film speed you want the meter to read on. I like to shoot Porta at 320. I know people sometimes shoot at 200, you can do that as well. There's even markations here of one and two stops difference. So you can do that. And then on the bottom, there's also a reminder you can set for yourself if you, you know, leave the camera laying around for some time, which I do not recommend with film in it, but you know, people do it sometimes. So yeah. And then um, you can see here, 
we didn't advance the film yet, so it's before zero. Just crank it till zero. Make sure that this is turning well. I'll do an extra one now, so you can see it. Yeah, so it's good to go. And that's how you load film into this camera. Uh, next, I'm gonna take it off again, so you can see how to unload it. So to unload the camera, it will automatically stop uh, when the roll is full at 36 shots, uh, which is good. And then you, so you're done shooting, you either finish the roll or you want to finish early, so you flip this sleeve to the right, you hear the shutter disengaging, and then it's in rewind, and then you just take the crank here, and you crank it back. Yeah, so now it's out. I'm not gonna wind it all the way in because I want to use this film still. Uh, then you can just open the back. Like so. And then you can just take the film out. There you go. That's it. Let's close this up again. Yeah. Good. So that's Alders to the Nikon F. That's how you shoot it. Uh, we actually have this one for rent. Uh, right now we have one Nikon F kit that's available. There's also a Nikon mat which is like the cheaper brother and often used as a side body for the original Nikon F. Which is also a great camera but I highly recommend trying this out especially because it's such a classic really. Um, it's great. Give it a shot. Alright, that's all. Cheers.